I was raised to like when we go to a certain place or um, an important person's house, it's like don't touch nothing, don't mm-hmm. talk, don't don't talk unless you're spoken to. It's like, you know, I think you're thinking of it like our parents come here illegally and, you know, they feel like they're in this city that they just have to feel lucky enough to be in. Yeah. And, you know, they work really hard and, you know, I was taught like work hard and put your head down and just work. Yeah. And it's like, think how that's like evolved to where I'm at in life now. It's like, damn, like as, as a kid, it's more like don't touch anything. But yeah. as an adult, it's been like when I'm in these like spaces, sometimes I feel like I dim my light. Sometimes I want to just mm-hmm. be like, man, like just be lucky that you're here. Mm-hmm. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode here at Off the Cuff, where conversations lead to inspiration. I'm your host, Christian Palmer, and today I'm joined by community leader, CEO, and co-founder of Kids of Immigrants. It's a lifestyle brand that was inspired by their roots, environment, and upbringings that turned into a whole movement, a movement that's inspired so many people across the globe, including myself. They represent culture, unity, and acceptance through their many collaborations and collections that they drop. I'm super excited about this episode. So without further ado, here's Off the Cuff with Daniel Buzo. Daniel, welcome to the show, man. What's good? What's good? How you feeling, bro? I'm feeling amazing. Good to be back in New York. I Uh, see the hat. Yeah, this is home. Gray bottom. Huh, yeah, 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 got, yeah, got to, yeah, right? Yeah, got yeah. to. You can't do the black yeah. mask. <laughs> Facts, man. It's good to have you, you know, back home, kind of where it all originated. You know, grew up in Brooklyn, yes. uh, and which is an amazing thing. You know, and I mentioned a lot in the intro, you know, because y'all are doing a lot. You know, Kids of Immigrants is a brand that I've been following for a while. Um, when I was introduced to it, it was actually a couple of years ago uh, through through a good friend, um, Andre. You know, Andre, if you're watching this, man, I appreciate you <laughs> just throwing the alley there. Um, but, you know, y'all have been doing some phenomenal work. The mission yeah. is always community led. Um, but I kind of want to set the stage for you a little bit more and for the audience who are tapping in here for the first time, you know, just tell us a little bit more uh, about kind of the behind the scenes that people may not necessarily see and how Kids of Immigrants came about. Yeah. Um, Kids of Immigrants is six years old now, going up to seven, uh, May 2016. Mm-hmm. Uh, I met my co-founder, like he's like my best friend, Wella Dennis, um, in the Bay. I lived there for 10 months and uh, he, we just connected, we bonded and he was, we were both talking about just fashion overall style um, and he mentioned Kids of Immigrants and this was 2013, Mm -hmm. so three years you know, previous to starting the brand. And that's just something that connected us. And it was really through our conversation. It wasn't like we were trying to start a brand called Kids of Immigrants. It was like his parents being from Liberia and him being from Sacramento. And, you know, I'm being from New York and my parents being from Honduras is there's, you know, surface level feels like there's a lot of differences there, but there was such a strong bond built just off being first generation. Um, and even though his parents were, are Liberian, like a lot of his upbringings were very similar to mine um, in the way we were raised and sort of like the good stuff and the bad stuff as first generation like Americans. And also just for me, it was like it was great to like bond with him over this because I've always felt like that dual upbringing of where my parents is from and being born here was like, I never felt like I was all the way American Mm -hmm. and I never felt like I was all the way Honduran. Like I was like right in between and I feel like that perspective was never told. And so I, you know, you're kind of confused as to like where to lean on. Yeah. And and I definitely appreciate you sharing that because, you know, it's kind of a universal thing, right? Um, you know, I'm a kid of immigrant as well. Like, you know, I'm from Guatemala and my, my parents migrated here. Um, and something that you, you really said when, when you, that stuck with me, even kind of even during my research and learning a little bit more about your story, uh, was the relationship 
y'all both had between you and uh Wella. Wella. Yeah. You know, um, y'all relationship is just untapped, unmatched. It's like uh-huh. the first time y'all met, y'all felt like y'all known each other for years. Yeah. But I want to lean on that a little bit more more because I think it's important for us to really understand that when you're building anything, you gotta set the foundation from the yeah. start. You know, and I remember uh you sharing that you guys used to wake up at like 6 a.m. to go to MacArthur Park. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hustle and bustle and some of the street vendors would inspire you. Yeah. And can we talk a little bit more and take us back to those early moments? Yeah, I feel like Wella and I just like, we have a foundation that whether kids of immigrants go on for the next 10 days or 10 years or 10 decades, like we have something that um, it's beyond the brand. Um, and that was really important. I think for me, just having that type of backbone in a business um, just is really helpful in those days that you doubt yourself or those days that you worry or your fears grow. Um, and just having someone that believes in you and like, nah, like, fuck that. We're going to do this. Like, just you you, you got it. You're gonna, you know, we're going to keep learning and keep growing. Um, so that's really important just fundamentals yeah. and then uh when we started i moved to la and he ended up moving as well and just the neighborhood like the pico union hood is like you know immigrant dominated from you know a lot of central american k towns right there so a lot of koreans and i felt like for some reason you know i'm not from la but it felt like home just mm. the overall community and MacArthur park is just like a, a park that has a lot of immigrants, a lot of street vendors, a lot of like immigrant culture and businesses. And I feel like I, I you know, it's, it's always amazing to work with street vendors nowadays because it's a full circle moment. Um, looking at street vendors was just like, that was our like proof that there's no excuse. Like I, I would look at them and be like, yeah, this guy's flipping orange juice. This guy's flipping a uh, torta. This other lady's flipping like thrift clothes. And this other dude's trying to sell me an ID. <laughs> and I felt like, yo, like there's no, like, and I looked at them and I felt like they were entrepreneurs. And they are entrepreneurs in their own space. They understand their real estate, their demographic, their supply chain yeah. and all that. So, and I also would look at them and buy stuff from them and be like, Man, this guy, I just paid $4 for orange juice. You know, even if he sells, let's just say, 100 of them, you know, that's $400. And, you know, I know this guy's like probably got his own rent. I was just kind of go deep in their story because yeah. I could relate to them because they felt like family. And I'm like, he's probably sending money back home to like Mexico or Salvador, wherever he's from. And I was just like, we would look at each other with Wella and just go there. Literally at 6 a.m., just out of straight inspiration because that was when, like, that that rush hour, that morning rush hour started yeah. over there. And we would go there and go back home and talk and be like, how, like, literally there's no excuse for us not being able to do this because at the time we were broke, not poor, but broke. We were, like, you know, lacked resources and we had all the ideas, but we didn't have all the you know what I mean, all the tools to do something to get it off the ground. And we thought we needed capital or some type of cash flow. And we didn't have any of that. So, but we had, you know, that inspiration. So that's beautiful, bro. And, you know, when, when you're kind of going back, uh, you know, which I call like the T1, T2s and stuff of the, yeah. of the moments, like yeah. what were some of the ideas you were cooking up in those early moments? So everything was, we sourced from vintage stores, AKA thrift stores, um, thrift shops. We would like basically recreate, like we'll find hoodies or t-shirts and recreate, repurpose them in our own way. Like the support your friends yeah. slogan. Um, this is how I know like we were, we're like in such a divine space because the support your friends slogan wasn't something that we said in our mind. It's mm-hmm. something that we lived, but the way it was put together wasn't through like a design, like tool, illustrator, none of that. It was like Wella found a shirt that says support yours, had another shirt that has the friends that arched like that. Yeah. Cut the cut the two shirts and put it into one piece. Wow. And all, all this came from like 
going thrifting and then he would lay out all the pieces and try to make sentences out of everything. Wow. So that's how Support Your Friends came came along and you know, we made it in 2016 and we were like, man, this is this is at that time we were already getting like you know that 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 traction of just like like anything counts at that yeah. time when you just starting off and like we we're like, damn, this is literally at the at the at the beginning, a lot of the homies were supporting us, so it felt like, man, this this slogan makes the most sense because we don't have any money, we don't have any like real resources or tools to make this brand happen, but we got the community, we got the hood, we got the the homies that being like, man, like I'll repost it, I'll reshare it, I'll like I'll shoot it for you, I'll help you with your website, I'll model for you, I'll like tell my story to connect it with y'all like whatever that is like it was just like you know that's when I realized you know I'm saying I'm broke but not poor because I was like man I'm just I felt so rich in mm. resources and the people around me the, the spirits around me was just like very encouraging and like really helped me get it off the ground. That's beautiful, man. And, you know, you talk a lot about that support. I know family is super, super important for you as well. Um, you know, I'm just curious to know a little bit more about kind of some of those the, the family stories that you heard kind of coming up or just some of those sacrifices that I made. Because I think it also relates back to what I started, like kids yeah. of immigrants. You know, what are some of those sacrifices that your family made that, that fuel you and give you that fire? Yeah, my, my pops is the OG. He's like the oldest out of all his siblings. He came to the United States, like to, in New, to New York, like in 85, 86 or just something like that. And he was like, he brought all his siblings mm. from Honduras. You know, I, I don't know what style, like some of them were able to do it legally. Some of them like just, you, you mean, don't know what style. just yeah. pulled up and, and crossed, I mean, yeah. did, did what they <laughs> had that, to right? do. Yeah. So a lot of my, he was able to bring a lot of my family. He was like, you know, I always looked at my father like as a pioneer in that way mm. and, you know, came out here, you know, started his job getting $200 a week with like six kids that eight kids something at that time maybe six he has eight kids total yeah so you know two hundred dollars i like if i was to get paid two hundred dollars a week right now i wouldn't be able to live so mm -hmm. to, to to make it happen make ends meet with all his children like you know those, those type of sacrifices that type of like those challenges and struggles Man, like I, I just can't imagine, you know, what he went through and how much belief and vision you gotta have to be, to go from where he's at, where he started to where he's at now. Now he's retired, you know. He he's chilling, like he's comfortable Beautiful. for the rest of his life. And I feel like I think that added a lot of positive uh, motivation and energy to everything I do. I think some of it might be a little toxic. Um, just because I think that's something that we realized too, like our parents inherited a lot of great values, but also we inherited scarcity. Mm. We inherited a lot of that trauma, a lot of that lack, that thought of like not being, I always say, like I, I've been realizing this a lot lately. It's just like, I was raised to like, when we go to a certain place or, um, an important person's house is like, don't touch nothing, don't mm -hmm. talk, don't don't talk unless you're spoken to. It's like, you know, I think you're thinking of it like our parents come here illegally and, you know, they feel like they're in this city that they just have to feel lucky enough to be in. Yeah. And, you know, they work really hard. And, you know, I was taught like work hard and put your head down and just work. Yeah. And it's like, think how that's like evolved to where I'm at in life now. It's like, damn, like as, as a kid, it's more like don't touch anything. But yeah. as an adult, it's been like when I'm in these like spaces, sometimes I feel like I dim my light. Sometimes I want to just mm -hmm. be like, man, like just be lucky that you're here. Mm -hmm. And it's like, nah, like fuck that. I belong here. I deserve to be here. I'm just as good as anyone else and everyone else. And 
think, you know, all of it starts with yourself, that confidence and being able to like evolve in, the, in that way and unfold in that way has been like something new for me because it's been, you know, six years with the company. It's, I've grown so much, but even now still seeing some of those like things of them in my own light. I think like having, there's some people around me now, like, you know, my girl, she's like, she's always like, yo, like you're, you're the best. Like, mm. don't, you're too good for this. And there's, you know, my team and other people that remind me that, yeah. but I see how sometimes I'm, I'm quick to like shut myself down or dim my own light or make my shit sound not as big as everyone else's. Or, and I think it feel for a long time, I think I was lying to myself saying it was like my humbleness and just straight mm -hmm. humility, but it's not, it's been like my lack of confidence that I feel like comes from how our parents came to this country. Like, you know, our parent, you don't, you're illegal. You don't, if somebody say something wild to you, you don't want to call the cops, you know, it's just yeah. a bigger issue. And it's like, they come in here with that mentality of just work hard and don't bother anyone. And, like, don't do too much. Yeah. And that shit, you know, when it, the way I was being raised that way, now I'm like seeing it like more and more, like how that, that has like affected me. And, you know, I'm, I'm thankful to have some great self-awareness of, of myself and being able to catch these things as I continue to grow. Meditation, self-love, and you also sell self-awareness is something that uh, you've been learning along the way. And I want to really dive in a little bit more into that because it's something that I know it doesn't happen overnight. I'm also even learning about myself every day. Yeah. You know, how do I give my best self? How do I exchange energy with good energy and the people around me? So take us to those spaces uh, of you kind of unraveling, you know, the self-awareness, the self-love. Um, I, th I think for me, that's probably the most important part of my day. Even meditating today is like, as soon as I'm about to rush myself in my meditation, like, oh, like, you got to go. It's like, nah, this is the most important meeting of the day. Mm. Like, none of these meetings matter if you're not in a good place, if you don't fill your own cup up. Um, for me, I think that it's all about just giving yourself time, grace, love. And meditation is one format for me. That's just the way I do it. Yeah. I think that... Uh, I don't think everyone may connect with meditation, but I think everyone should connect with themselves at, you know, if they can, if you can try at least once a day, however that may be, whether it's taking a walk or going to the gym or whatever those things is, you need, I think it's important that you take a moment to yourself to talk to yourself, to take some mental inventory. Like where's my mind wandering off to, um, I think for me, I've learned that I have like anxiety. Mm -hmm. So meditation helped me a lot with my anxiety. It's helped me calm down and say, yo, everything's good. Yeah. You, you got everything you need today. And those are like parts of my daily affirmations. All, all needs are met. You know, being able to be available today to express this peace, love, and joy. You know, uh, declaring abundance and prosperity and ha harmony in my life. Yeah. I feel like, you know, learning these values. I don't really pray for like money or success or things. It's just more of like, this is who I am. I'm already, I'm already love. I'm already, you know, this bright light. I'm already prosperous. And it's almost like owning into those things have allowed those things to uh, happen through me. So not necessarily like, th there are some things that I'm specific about, like, you know, eventually having a family and being able to be a great father, a great husband, you know, to have companies and generational wealth for my children and mm -hmm. being a, a leader in my community, uh, a beacon of inspiration and hope for my people. Yeah. Those things I get a little specific with, but, but, I feel like it, it all stems from like, yo, know, I am this uh, divine expression of the source of God, of whatever it, God is to whoever. But, you know, being able to, I don't, like, I, I feel like my, what I've always, I grew up as in a Christian church. And so 
So that's always been part of my life. But I think when I sort of took that shift from like praying to like meditating and an affirmative prayer, it was like, I felt like before it was like a, me, I used to pray like a negotiation with God, like, <laughs> yo, like, need help today and blah, blah, blah. And like, you know, if you give me this and I'm going to stop drinking this weekend. Or, well, I don't know. It was like, yo, you, well, how are you trying to change God's mind? Yeah, like, word. <laughs> and um, I think I learned that God is always love. God is always peace, joy, and all these amazing things. And it's like, we're just... Mm, a lot of times not even available to it. Mm. We're not even accepting those things. And um, so once I started learning more about myself and and like taking that time to meditate, um, to have that relationship with God, um, it's just, I think we, our best idea is like, for me, it was like, I work well under pressure. And it's like, no, like I, actually when I'm calm, no matter how crazy the storm is, like to be calm is to meditate for me and I'm able to perform at those high levels and still have like, you know, good think as a CEO and what I do, like my, one of my biggest responsibilities on the daily is being a decision maker. Mm. And to be that you, I need to be at a place of calmness. I don't ever want to decide from a place of lack or scarcity or like, Oh, like, like we need to get this like money in, I don't get this and I'm not going to be able to do that. It's like, nah, like if I can be in this like abundant place, like emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, then my decisions come from there rather than like running around with like, my, like with my head cut off, just trying to get the back here. And I did that for so many years. Right. And now that's kind of where I'm at in life. Like it sounds very simple, but like allowing shit to happen and allowing these things to come to me instead of like feeling like I just got to out hustle everyone, out work everyone. I got to be in all these 30 different places to make sure like we growing, we elevating, blah, blah, blah. And it's like literally the most important thing is like doing that for yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to think of it that way when you're in the middle of it or when you got rent to pay or when you you know, you don't got any money to eat. It's like, I get that. It's hard to be like, bro, you should pray or meditate. And it's like, bro, I don't know how I'm paying my rent this week. Yeah. But it's, it's, if that's something that I'm trying to figure out how to express more and tell people more, just because it works for me. And I hope that it helps someone else the way it's worked for me. That's beautiful. You know, and we're, we're in kind of uh, spaces here where, you know, it's all about, you know, if you can inspire one person that sometimes is enough. But of course, yeah. if you can reach masses and more people at once, you know, even better, right? Yeah. Um, but I sense the pureness in just everything. You know what I'm saying? The pureness in your story, the pureness in which I do and elevate through the brand and, and through the mission of the brand, right? Because it's always community first, right? Um, but in the world that's forever changing and shifting, like how do ya, you and your team, kids of immigrants, keep the pureness of the brand always at the forefront when the world's just always evolving and forever shifting? Yeah, like back to like, it starts with us, starts with me, where my intentions are at, how, you know, am I aligned with, with my own self? And obviously that just transcends into everything that I do, including kids of immigrants. Um, I feel like for us is like six years ago when we started, it was always like, oh, you guys are like a nonprofit or some shit, right? And we're like, no, you know, it was like, there's, for me, I went to school for social work. I have a BSW from Norfolk State University. Um, I went to school for social work. My sister passed, she was locked up mm. and died in jail. And it was like, it was one of those things that, can really make you or break you. Mm -hmm. And I felt like for me, I was like, my sister wasn't a bad person, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was just like somebody in the wrong place at the wrong time and this environment that we grew up in. Um, and it just made me, like social work was the closest to like, how can I use this tragedy and try to flip it? Mm -hmm. And that was the closest I thought, I, the closest to like a mission that helped me at least felt like I needed, it was going to help me heal that I could get to. 
and I graduated and I did it for a year as an internship. And I was like, man, this is like amazing work, but I don't think it's something I can do. I don't, I'm not like a, my ADHD is like crazy. I can't be in an office and do the nine to five. And the work is, the workload is not easy at all. So I always like tilt my hat to social workers. Like to do that job is like, and it's so important and I don't feel like they get their flowers enough mm -hmm. because like they're the gluing piece, the holding piece to a lot of these things that are happening in the world, but on a very like individual level. Yeah. And like I, I saw a lot just working, like interning for a year. So I saw the need of it, of like more role models, more representation of like people wanting to do good for others. Um, and I think for me, it's just how can I do that in my own way? So off the rip, the ethos of the brand was was to be purpose-driven, community-driven, to create with intention. So I feel like that's so engraved in who we are that it's like it's, it's, it's a brick. It's a brick foundation. We can never. It's like no matter what, our heart is always in the right place because we already built this foundation. I think now how does that scale has been challenging, but I think we're realizing that no matter what, the community is always going to be first. And it doesn't have to be by this like charity work or this paying it forward. Like it doesn't have to connect necessarily with like a nonprofit type work. It's literally how we just do everything and it's so engraved into what we do that we don't even have to try so when I say it's always community driven we just shot our last campaign last week comes out in two weeks it's called we are our parents while there's dreams and everyone on set everyone behind the scene everyone in front of the camera or people from our community and literally you know, we've done big campaigns with Vans and other brands and we've had Here, budgets. I know it was fire. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We had budgets to like hire some bigger people, you would say, or influencers. And for us, we're like, nah, we, we, we always call our models role models. And mm. we're like, we continue to hire within our community, uh, continue to bring people on from our community. And, you know, I think we also understand we, we can't, we could do anything, but we can't do everything, right? And then we can, we may not be able to help everyone, but we can help someone. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that's engraved in everything we do, our photo shoots. Like the Vans one, you know, it's the biggest budget we ever had to shoot. And we hired uh, these students from our art program, from two different art programs to shoot it, to style it, to set design it. And these kids never done this before. Wow. The campaign was called Anything Is Possible. So to me, it was like, I've never done any, I didn't, I didn't go to school for what, what position I'm in right now. I was, the, I just learned as I went, you know, as I went, as I grew. And I feel like that's what Anything Is Possible meant for me, where it was like, these kids and students probably never done this before, but the best way to learn sometimes is just to do it. And we're able to hire, you know, all these kids and, Hire the homies just for quality reasons. Make sure that they know what they're doing. Um, so I think that's just always in what we do. And um, lately, I feel like the word community is just thrown around everywhere. And like, it's such a big part of like whether when it, now it's like community, diversity, inclusivity is like key terms for yeah. marketing for Those a words. lot for all these yeah. brands. And I think it's cool. Like, like, but that's just who we've been for six plus years now. Like there's, this is not a shift in consciousness for us. It's not a shift in narrative for us. This is like, it's what we've been doing. And I feel like it, you know, it's like we, I feel like we're part of that era of pioneers that really put the people on the forefront of like our mission. That's beautiful. You know, and, and we can't wait to see the new campaign you guys got coming out and stuff because yeah. everything I do is always like the, like you said, the, the mission first. It's always a theme behind it, right? And to, to this new one, I know I saw you guys posted something about, uh, you know, we are parents while there's dreams. What does that mean to the world? Yeah. But I wanted to flip it to you. So what, what does that mean to you? 
I said I think wildest dreams because I feel like they can't even couldn't even dream where we're at right now. Mm. As you know, I think my parents still don't fully understand what I'm doing. You know, like they're like he makes clothes, whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> and like my mom's is like, so you make like suits? Or I'm like, no, nah, it's like more like a t-shirt and a hoodie, mom. And she's like, what? <laughs> and then my pops is like, he'll be like, yo, all the kids at church was telling me that your shoe sold out. How come you don't make more shoes? And I was like, pops, it's, it's like, yeah. it's Vans. It's a different conversation yeah. than just saying, right. yo, let's make 500 more shoes. Thanks. So uh, I, I, we say wild is dreams because of that because it's almost like, we're in these places and not just as creators, but just as any professional. I think that's something that we want to continue to encourage more. Like I don't, kids and immigrants not yet work. We're, we're creatives, but I think even as professionals, I think, you know, the last campaign, you know, one of the homies that shot it, she was like a surgeon. She just graduated and became a surgeon. And it's just like, you know, her parents are from, Mexico and El Salvador and it's like that's wild to think mm -hmm. like you can come here with nothing and your kids your next generation is now a surgeon like wow you know so I feel like for me it's just kids of immigrants as a storyteller it's just our unique way to connect because I think we could all think of it and say yeah I'm kind of a wild dream for my parents that no matter what is it that you're doing like yeah it's like you know, I think this it's a wild dream to be where we're at right now. Look at that, and you're living in it, man. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing that, you know, when you live in kind of your purpose in this world, you also sh go back to the foundation, which is family, you know, yeah. able to share that with them as well. Yeah. You know, the fact that, you know, your pops is retired, that's a, that's a blessing in itself. Yeah. You know, so now it's your time to lead the way and lead the pack, you know, yeah. for your family to come. And that's a beautiful thing. Um, for, for everybody who's like a kid of immigrant, right? Where you want to, now the weight is all for them. Now we're going to keep marching forward and stuff, Yeah, you know, but this can't be possible without a team. Right. Yeah. And, and I want to lean on that a little bit uh, on the team aspect, because for a lot of entrepreneurs, founders, you know, now more than ever, people are f tapping into their passions and their whys and building businesses or building ideas. Uh, and they may be the only one doing it. You know what I'm saying? Them or family producing or even helping out, you know, in whatever capacity you're in. But I, I want to talk a little bit more or what advice you would share uh, to, to how y'all built a team in general. Like, what, what are some of the things that you keep in mind when you're building your team? Um, building a team is not easy at all, um, especially working with friends like I think it's not easy at all. Um, I think when building a team, um, there as friends, there's we're all equals. But when you're building a team, you kind of set up a hierarchy just to get, just to be able to delegate and to you know figure things out in a way that everyone's there's different decision makers. There's an overall. And I think that's always that's that was a little difficult for me because like I looked at everyone as an equal and I still do, but I think I'm learning I've learned a lot lately how to be sort of like create the hierarchy within the team. Mm. And I think um it's been very helpful because I think we're all leaders in our own way, but there needs to be like some organization there. Yeah. And I think now we set, I think, as like it's myself, Wella, Debbie, um, and Christian. We've, you know, we've been friends prior to the company, so we came in as friends, and everyone like literally put blood, sweat, and tears into the into the mission, into the business, and you know, from years where there was no money involved and we weren't paying ourselves barely anything to now and you know keeping all those things in mind but now like what something i've been doing this year is trying just to set some boundaries at work and it's been helpful because as friends we almost friends that work together there's almost no boundaries so 
and and I'm the you know in a way I'm the leader of it. So I'll hit someone up, I don't know, hit Debbie up at eleven o'clock p.m. Like yo, like tomorrow let's do this, and it's like some of those. There's always gonna there might be urgent moments, yeah. but I think ninety percent of the time it's like that shit could have waited till tomorrow morning. Mm. And I think setting boundaries, um, like moving all conversation into email and keeping text messages for our, our fr the sake of our friendship has been really helpful because like sometimes like when those two worlds of friendship and work is combined, it's like, you know, I think text messages or just the way of communication, if it's not doesn't have those those parameters and it becomes overwhelming from one person. And I would see how I feel overwhelmed by one person because it's like a friendship and a work relationship. Um, I think overall to have a team um, is the most important thing you can do. And um, as a, to create a team is like finding those people that you can trust, but like sort of what you said earlier today, like, those people will start surrounding you when you put that energy out there. And um, I think one thing that's, I think three out of four of us started therapy with it, which in the last two years or something and how much we've grown individually mm -hmm. has helped the team collectively. Um, and like we're, we're family, but I think as family, we are understanding these boundaries and how important that is. Um, and we'll do anything to get the job done with, you know, and, and to, to, to do what we were supposed to do. Um, but I think now with therapy and all that type of shit, like we're like, yo, we got to get out of the survival mode. Like, mm -hmm. let's, like, we know we can do something. I was like, just cause we know we can execute something doesn't mean we should do it. Like if, if something is, is like disturbing our peace or taken away from that time that we need with ourselves, we need to really rethink that and be like, should we do this? But for a long time, I did it every time. Mm. Whether it's me not sleeping, whether it's me not prioritizing myself, my family, my friends, it was like, I did everything for the, I put the company first for a long time. And now I'm like, this year specifically, like trying to get out of that survival mode. A lot, of, I felt like a lot of it stemmed from survival. Like, like taking on every opportunity because I was just like, man, like I got to figure this out. Like I got to, you know, how I'm going to pay my bills or how I'm going to make, think the, the the larger we became as a company, you know, the more that was at stake, the more people that we employed and all those, there's a lot of pressure behind that, but I'm trying to like be calm about it and and work from a place of abundance. So it's like, I'm not, like, how am I going to pay everyone? It's just going to happen. It's yeah. already done, you yeah. know? So I don't, not like, oh, man, like, I hope we can make it through this year or any of those things. But the team is the reason why I'm here. I wouldn't be here without them. And I think, um, you know, I, I feel very blessed to have them in my, part of my life and part of the company every day. Absolutely, bro. Man, I could just definitely sense the the growth through the brand, yeah. through you. And it's a beautiful thing for me. Like I, I started therapy too about six months ago, maybe. Wow, me too. And like it was months. on the same type of time, yeah. you know? Yeah. But it, it's so fulfilling. You know, when I'm there, I pause. I finally feel like I'm, like I'm at ease, you know what I'm saying? And even the way I communicate, very similar to that, the way I feel now is subtle. I'm not... My words, and I'm not tripping over my words. Uh, I'm like my so, thoughts are coming to mind because when I went in there, I went in with the intent of I just want to be the best version of myself in whatever form that looks like. But obviously, you have to do the work to get to that yeah. that place, you know. And I think I want to spend some time right now because I think it's important for all everybody watching today um, for us to take a, a minute, but even for more so for you to to address, you know, everybody who's watching today who may be a kid of immigrant with the wildest dreams, you know, what what would you share with them? Um, it's possible. Literally anything is possible. And I'm living that every single day. And 
Uh, I heard this from Nipsey one time. He said, I, I, in paraphrase, he said something like, I wish I would have dreamed bigger. Mm. Like, I wish I would have dreamed bigger. Um, this is possible. And a lot of the work, I would say 90% of the work is within. And I think we get so caught up with all the external factors of like, well, how I'm going to do this, how I'm going to get the money, how I'm going to like go here or I'm going to do this. And it's like, you know, 90% of the work is within you and spiritually, emotionally, uh, mentally. Um, I didn't go to therapy for a long time because I was like, y'all crazy. Y'all need that shit. Then I go to therapy the first time. I'm like, oh, I'm fucked up. I'm I'm wilding. So, um, finding those uh, things to help you, and it's like it's shit's expensive. So it was like when I started it, I was like, you know, I'm gonna just try it. But one fifty a session is kind of crazy. Yeah. Like every week, that's that's six hundred dollars a month. Thanks. So I think like. Investing in myself, it's crazy because like if something costs one fifty or six hundred dollars a month for my company, that's whatever. Like, spend that. Like we need, we need, we need to do it. And I just realized how I never put myself first. Mm. And as kids of immigrants, I think, like I said, we inherited a lot of great qualities: the hard work we put in, the 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 humbleness that we have, the you know, the just the family orientation. The I feel like. We're very creative because for me, a lot of culture and creativity comes from um, not having the resources or the money. So you got to get super creative yeah. and you, you know, we, we make kids immigrants. I think the reason why no one can recreate anything like can't recreate KOI, they can, re I think it can definitely have some, be in, inspire a lot of people, but we made this. You know, as they say, from the mud with nothing, mm -hmm. like no money. We just got really creative, like support your friends. Respectfully, there's like five other brands that took our slogan, you know, sis and deceased. Hopefully they stop using it. <laughs> but it's like they took an idea from us that we started by thrifting. Mm -hmm. and like, you know, yeah, back to what I said, it's together, like, yo, yeah. like this is this came from saying we're going to do something. And I think. This sounds also very easy, and but we make it so complex. It's like it's literally making that decision. I'm gonna do this. Mm. You don't have to know how or where to start. Just say I'm gonna do this. I think as adults we stop using our imagination. I think imagination is super important. Just to, to exercise it every day. Like just imagine what you can actually do, and try to like go beyond the imagination of thoughts and try to imagine how you would feel hmm. if that was to happen like happy excited uh overwhelmed whatever that may be like try to feel into that imagination i think that's something you know I, it's it's tough to say cuz every road is different and everybody will grow differently in these spaces of spirituality emotion mentally but for me it's possible and i think for me Kids of immigrants and just overall Latinos and a lot of these subcultures. My two favorite artists are, is Burna Boy and Bad Bunny. Right. And I feel like because, well, right now and today is it, you know, 2022, because they didn't conform. And they're like, Bad Bunny's the biggest artist in the world. He's like, y'all got to come into my world. And it's very inspiring to me because it's like, this guy is singing reggaeton to the whole world. Mm. And he's not, he's not trying to sing in English. He's like, fuck that. Like, y'all got to come to me. And I think that's very powerful for our culture and all the subcultures yeah. within our cultures that it's like, yo, there's a niche for all of this. There's a, there's someone that will connect to all this. And the same thing with Burner. He's just like, this is like Afro music yeah. that to me is becoming bigger and better than any other genre mm -hmm. like yeah. you know like hip-hop rap r&b included you know i listen to more thames and wiz and rema and burna than like hip-hop last year like 
it's just that becoming that big, and it's so dope to see these sub coaches like, like reggaeton. You know, yeah. I I was kind of thinking like it's, it might be whack that if the Grammy like like I feel like for me, Burner and and Bad Bunny shouldn't be like the ha, shouldn't have the the best album for their category. They should have the best album for the entire like album of the year. Yeah. And it's like look at these these are sub like this is reggaeton. Yeah. This is you know, this is Afro beat or, you know, so I think like that's very inspiring. And as kids of immigrants, at least for me, I admire that shit. I look up to, it. I'm like, damn, like we could be the biggest influencers, the biggest artists we can be like pop culture is us. Mm -hmm. And it's always been us. But I think like now that there's that type of representation, it's, it becomes very inspiring for someone like myself. And I hope that what I'm doing can be inspiring to just kids, kids of immigrants, kids from the hood, just in general. Like this shit's possible. Like, you know, I didn't. This shit wasn't handed out to me. This, you know, I didn't get. I definitely, I've been. I'm blessed, but like I worked really hard and, you know, and try to figure out what my vision was. And you know, we six years in, and we got so much more work to do. And next year, and this year. Is, you know, it's going to be it's a lot of great things are happening right now. And I can't wait to share that to the world because if if you just found out about us, that's awesome because we just getting started. Like, wow. I almost can't believe it's been six years. That's crazy. When you look back, it's just like what what has been like the proudest moment. Um, I think my boy Abby made me realize this. And he was like, bro, like. You hired your friends, like, you know, my, my best friend Juan, 20 plus years, lives in LA with me. You know, he's like my production manager. It's like my boy. And he had, you know, as a kid from the hood, has a lot of challenges, you know, did some time for being in the hood, you know, selling drugs. Like, you know, that's how I, that's how I like go to occupation when you in them in that environment. Mm -hmm. And just to have him be part of my team now and be such a key part of my team and and also everyone else, I feel like I think being able to be a vessel and create a platform to provide opportunities and jobs for people, I think at that point, I'm like, I, I'm doing, that's where my heart was at. Like mm. these people are part of my community. Um, and if I could help in some way and more like teach them how to fish rather than give them the fish and they can create from this, like, you know, Wella has his own art brand now. Um, Debbie has, she's just started her her hot sauce um, Bar. company and family recipe. You know, me and Juan talking about doing our own production company, um, you know, uh, Christian, you know, now is like uh, a tour manager and I put them together with my best friend who manages Kehlani and Rico and mm. like all these opportunities from something that we created. I feel like that's a proud moment for me. Wavy. I love that, bro. And then looking ahead and stuff, as we wrap up here, um, what are some of the milestone goals for KOI and yourself? For the future? For the future, yeah. Um, Global storytelling, I feel like. Kids of Immigrants is, we could feel it here. You could relate to it. But, like, this shit's global. Like, mm. you know, traveling to Europe and, you know, seeing how d diverse the world is, I feel like, you know, I want to tell the Kids of Immigrants story from a kid from London, mm -hmm. you know, and we be able to have that cultural unity um, go global. And I feel like there's we already connect. You're in New York, but you're connecting with this brand that's LA. We're not we're based in LA, but we represent everyone. You sure. know, so it's not like you connecting with a an LA brand. You're connecting with a brand based out of there, but this message you're connecting to is bigger than the city. For sure. Um, we are aiming to open our our space next year, which would be a community hub. Mm. Um. And just growing the business, scaling, like I love to have, 
you know, offices around the world and being able to do what we what we're doing now in a way that we can scale around the world. And, you know, a lot of people are like, man, like, like LA is so lucky because you guys do activate out there so much. Um, we have like our pillars of, you know, how we show up is through education. We've done a lot of stuff with schools, art programs, UCLA colleges, um, tools and resources, the way we work with small businesses and a lot of like, the community, small businesses, mm -hmm. um, and brands that you go to complex con, yeah, you fact, get to understand. Yeah. So, and then wellness through mind, body, spirit, and then, um, inspiration. I want to, that's for us. Inspiration is the way we campaign. Like you're always gonna, we always, we want to continue to tell stories of our people. Cause I feel like if I was a kid and I always use myself as a rule of thumb, like if I would have seen like some dope Honduran people, I, role models, I think it would have inspired me more. And I never saw that. And I think that's a job for me. That's where I was like, I'm going to be that Honduran kid that hopefully can connect with a bunch of Honduran kids or Central American kids or Latino kids or just kids from the hood and say, oh, shit, I could do this too. Or I can do whatever it is. Yeah. And that's something I never had. So, uh Continue to use our tools and our, you know, and just take it global and being able to tell the story around the world and um, opening the, the the space next year in LA, and yeah, we we started our nonprofit finally. We've done so much community work, and now we're gonna officially make it a nonprofit. Um, we started our creative agency called United Individuals last mm -hmm. year. Continue to grow that. And then personal, I'm just like growing as a person. Like I want to like, I think something that I said is like I built this company um, and I revolved my life around it. Now mm -hmm. I want to, the company, I built something and try to like get it to revolve around me more where like I'm, there's a bigger goal than the company and those goals can be, you know, having a family eventually. I'm 34. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, having those goals in life. Cause yeah. I'm like, I, I was t joking with Weller the other day. I was like, bro, we said we were going to do this for our kids and for our next generation. I was like, where the fuck are the kids? <laughs> Cause you're 36 and I'm 34. <laughs> and like, we not even like close to that. Mm. So I think like preparing for that and being like, oh, I can go buy this crib. And like, how, when does that happen in yeah. my life? So now that's what I'm working on. That's beautiful, bro. You know, and I, and I definitely want to um, take this time and stuff. I know you you mentioned this uh, a little bit, uh, you know, flowers and stuff. You know, we're all about this platform in general. You know, we're all about giving people their flowers. And that's why I started in the first place. You know, my grandmother's a big inspiration and I'm living through her legacy. Through every conversation, she was a big storyteller, very so, vividly. So. Sit on a couch, something similar like this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'll very vividly, and I think that to me, is you know legacy you know building that legacy so i say that to say i want to take this time to like you know give you your flowers of, you. of appreciation because what y'all doing the intent the mission the community you know you are touching many lives across the world and globally you know and for somebody that was introduced to it uh, a couple of years ago i've seen the work that you put in but to actually feel the energy in real time it's a match and untap, you know what I'm Thank saying? You. So I definitely want to take the time to to appreciate you, say that, Thank you. but also give you your flowers. Thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Absolutely. I appreciate this uh this talk for real. No, for sure. We always flip it back to the guests though, you know. Who would you oh, give yeah. your flowers to? Oh. Man, it's a lot of people. Um today. Oh. I think uh, I feel like maybe one of my siblings, mm -hmm. my brother or my sister, I feel like they are so inspirational to my life. And I think they're, you know, my brother works, they work like nine to five. My sister's a nurse, but I'm like, y'all my heroes. You know, a lot of people are inspired by what I do, but I'm inspired by not like I don't really get inspired respectfully by 
any influencer or any people in position, like, I feel like a lot of it is like, it's cool. I like it, but it's not inspiring to me. What inspires me is that person that's getting up every six, every day and, you know, making ends meet and, and just that hustle and just that determination in your heart. So I think like my sister, my brother, you know, they're, they, they got homes, they got kids, and they taking care of business. And, you know, from the outside looking in, it's like, oh, cool, that's cool. And it's like, nah, these are real heroes mm-hmm. in our community and my family and my life. That's beautiful, bro. You know what I'm saying? And as we wrap up here, we also have another segment on the show um, called The Hidden Gems. So what I would need, it's a variety of questions in here. What I would need to do is I'm going to shake it up and you just pull one question, read it out loud, and see what comes off the cuff. But Here we go. I know I was talking a lot. I'm like, damn, I might, <laughs> I might have went over this hour. <laughs> All right. What self affirmations do you say to yourself every day? Wow. Yeah, perfect. I could do it again or just say it's all my needs are met. Everything I need, I have. Um, I, you know, I radiate love, joy, and peace. I am, you know, I, I accept prosperity and abundance as my life through my life. I'm an expression and reflection of the source. You know, I am great. I am love. I love myself. I love life. You can tell I do this every day because I say a lot, but I I say a lot of things to myself every day and that's a gist of it. It's a lot more. I be That's beautiful, bro. And you know what I'm saying? Thank you so much just for your time, your energy, Um, and just the space we shared today. So thank you for being here. For sure. My man. My guy. And there you have it. That was Off the Cuff with Daniel Bueso.